um, so you understand that it's not um, you can't copy and all that stuff like we normally do okay and then it's going to ask you uh, the next page says third party guide we don't need to do that because I'm a trained assessor and I'll be marking it so we don't need someone to do third party assessment at your workplace so you can leave that blank now we get on to the fun stuff the questions each one I'll require something different from you. I do not want you to worry at the top where it says estimated time, 25 minutes, some say 30 minutes. That estimates how long it should take you to answer the questions, not how long you need to do a presentation or anything like that. The first one is your only presentation for this course, okay? You um, may do that in a group. Um, so, there's three questions that you need to talk to the class about. You can use any um, paperwork or um, any aids that you need to do that. Under the model WHS regulations, chapter four, which is in your big guide that you've got. Um, section 60, identify the factors contributing to um, musculoskeletal disorders. Okay, so you might want to um, borrow our skeleton here. You might want to have a diagram. Um, don't have to do a PowerPoint, but you can if you want to, just so you can identify and demonstrate those. Number two, in Safe Work Australia's Code of Practice for Hazarded Manual Tasks, how have manual tasks that may involve risk to self or others been defined as? Again, you can just read what's in the manual out to that. Um, and provide three examples of manual tasks involving risks. Now, if you have a group of three, you can demonstrate one each. Correct way to pick up a box and the incorrect way to pick up a box. Obviously, um, a simulated um, demonstration because we don't want to actually hurt ourselves, okay? Now, the next page, it'll say activity checklist for assessor. You don't have to fill out any of that because that's what I do to mark what you just did. So then we have the next page for activity B. Okay. This one is just a question and answer and you can write the answers under here. Okay. You can just write the answers here. If you want another piece of paper that is fine. That staple it here, not at the back, on here. Okay. Um, provide two examples of how you can assist in the assessment of risk in manual tasks. What are the factors of risks in manual tasks? Again, you're really just looking up the answer in your workbook and writing it here. Lots of it you have done already with Marge, so it should be common knowledge for you. Again, the next page is mine where I assess what you have just done. Okay, the next one, activity 1C, you're going to do with me. It's question and answer with me out loud. You don't need to write anything down. So the next time I see you, 1C is for Kelly. Okay, 1C Kelly, kind of rhymes. Okay, and I'll ask you those questions and without your notes, I want you to answer me, okay? There's three questions, um, which is identify the WHS hierarchy of risk controls. Uh, under WHS, as employers, what must you do? Where should you be able to find workplace procedures? Very simple. Again, the next page, me, I, I, that's used for me to help you mark. The next one, activity 2A, um, it's providing you with an opportunity to identify how to prepare workplace layer and environmentals. So this, I want you to do an essay form. There are six questions. You can amalgamate all that into one essay and attach, print and attach to this, okay? I don't care how many words it is, as long as you have covered each topic, that is thing. So how can the workplace layout be improved for the manual task? Are there any environmental factors that can be changed to improve health and safety with the task? So obviously you're choosing a task. What are the organisational procedures for the task preparation? From your own thinking, how would you prepare to conduct the manual task? How does this task impact on the workflow? And how should um, you go about organising the task to ensure this um, 
task meets workflow requirements, okay? Now, it has says there's a case study A, which is in your learner guide. However, you don't have to do their demonstration, which I think his name is George. What you can do is your own, and that's fine with me, okay? So you can find something in your surgery, that's a manual task, and you can do your essay on that. Again, the next page is for me to mark that essay, so we skip that. The next one, identify eight factors. I want you to list them here. So eight factors to be considered when preparing um, and packaging loads for movement and four procedures that um, they need to follow. Again, um, it's about a girl named Amber. You can write about that from the case study in here or Again, you can refer it to your own workplace and make your own up, okay? But that could, that should all fit on this page. Again, the next page is my marking, so we don't have to worry about that. The next one I want you to write on here as well, okay? It should fit lovely in there. Identify four types of PPE that you will need to use in your workplace. That should be fairly easy for us. And two, what should you do when selecting and using PPE for, for tasks? Now, it says manual tasks. Um, I might want you to worry about that. The answer to number two would be Spalding's criteria, okay? So the risk of infection control, that's what I want you to write there, okay? Make it more industry relevant. Next page, I'm gonna mark that. The next one, again, very simple. You can write it in the bottom of this box. What do you need um, to do to determine if you have the correct skills and abilities to perform a task? Identify four questions that you can ask yourself when determining your personal capabilities in relation to a manual task. What does assessing your personal capabilities help you to achieve? Okay, again, very simple. If you did need a bit of a guide, We've got this lovely fat book here, okay, which is in order of these questions too, chapters, um, the way they've asked these questions. Um, next page, my marking page. Okay, so the next one, I want you to write on a separate piece of paper with diagrams and attach it, staple it into here, okay? What are three things you should consider when preparing to use manual handling techniques? Identify three things you should do before lifting. Um, to save you writing is why I'm asking for pictures and diagrams, um, which I can assess you on, which is perfect. When pushing and pulling loads, what shouldn't you do? When lifting and carrying loads, where is the ideal position to hold the item? Again, all of these things you can draw for me in like cross, not what to do, green tick, what to do. Identify three things that team handling should include. Okay, then we made that a bit easier for you. Next page, my marking page. Okay, um, for activity 3B I'm up to, identify three criteria that mechanical aid should meet. What should mechanical aids and handling devices provide you with? Why should you refer to the manufacturer's instructions when using a mechanical aid or handling device? What information may you find in a manufacturer's instructions? I want you to find all them. You can find them in your workplace, you can Google them. And I want you to print them and attach. Then I want you to get a highlighter and go through and highlight the areas that they're asking you to identify. Okay, we'll keep it simple. Next page, me, that's my work, I'm marking that. The next one I want you to make a schedule. Okay, this might be easier done on your computer with Excel. What is meant by pace in manual tasks and how can you control this? So your um, schedule, what should your schedule include? From your own thinking, how can you recognize safe working procedures? I will tell by the way you've done your schedule that you understand that, okay? And attach it to this page. Next page, I'm marking it. It's my marking page. The next one, I've attached on the back of this assignment a hazard report form. You may do that on our college or you may do that in your workplace. You may do that in your home. I don't care as long as you have correctly filled it out. 
okay? But answer one to four, uh, questions one to four, you answer here and then you will rip the um, hazard report from off the back and attach it in here once you have filled it out. All right? Again, the next page is for my marking. The next one um, are diagrams again to save yourself. Identify three different symptoms that may be associated with musculoskeletal injuries. Um, when should you complete an accident um, incident record? So that one's a writing one. Uh, what must you do when filling out an accident incident report? Record, record. Sorry, everyone. Record. What do you need to do if reporting an injury for a compensation claim? Okay, I'm happy for you to print out a compensation claim and fill it out in a mock situation and attach it. I'm happy for you to draw diagrams. Let's just keep it very simple. So our hands don't fall off from writing. Again, the next page is for my marking. The next one is written and it will fit here. Again, okay. And that is question 4C we're up to. Identify four ways that you can participate in health and safety at work. Simple. What is important, you, uh, sorry, why is it important that you participate and contribute to work health and safety? So there's no injuries that can be answered in one sentence. From your own experience or thinking, identify two issues or concerns with manual handling tasks. Now, I would suggest that would be something like um, it takes longer to achieve a task, um, et cetera, et cetera. Next page, my marking. Um, what can you do to take a risk management approach in the workplace? So the next one, you can write it down. How can you perform workplace inspections? Identify three aspects of good housekeeping practices. Okay, so just like we did before, I provided you with a workplace hazard reporting form you are now going to make your own up, okay? So you're going to construct your own. You have to fill it out. You're just going to make one up for your workplace, relevant to your workplace in the dental, and you're going to attach it in here, okay? And attach. Okay, next page. It's my marking page again. I promise we're nearly done. It sounds a lot more than what it is. Um... Summative assessment. So the next page says summative assessment and that just tells you what to expect in the next pages. Now we have section A, skills activity. Do you know what? You've already done that in doing the activities I've just given you. So you don't need to do section A at all. There is no skills activity required for this unit as they're covered in the previous activities. Okay. Section B, however, is a list of questions. You will need to do this on another piece of paper. They are long answers, okay? And there's a whole heap of uh, questions there. All right, that goes over two pages. There are 15 questions. And then my marking page. The next one is PRAC. Section C, that's PRAC that you do with me in class. So when you have finished all that, come to me and we'll do the questions at the front that you need to do Q&A with me and we do the prac, okay? So it's very easy. Um, it's basically us just chatting and you demonstrating some things to me, okay? My marking and then the rest is all me and marking. You don't have to do anything. All right, so that's conduct manual um, tasks safely which is our final unit for Cert 4, so we can issue those certificates. If you have any questions or need further information, I um, will be doing an information session tonight. You can um, and put that on Teams, um, going through this workbook, so we understand it a little bit better. But from now, I'm going to put this workbook on Teams, so you can access it straight away. You can print it. Um, I will have some here if I see you Wednesday or before. Um, and then when you come in, you can grab the assessment. Okay, thanks everyone.